Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Sriram, uh, founder of the Eigenlayer Project. Today, I'm going to talk about some myths in data availability. And, uh, you know, I just made this talk in the last half hour, so there may be errors. But, uh, you know, but this is based on what I've been hearing kind of through the conference and trying to set the record straight on some of these things. So the first one is restaking doesn't secure EigenDA. So EigenDA is a product which is built on Eigenlayer, which is a restaking protocol, where you stake ETH and uh, stakers and operators opt in to serve new services. But you know, some people are saying, for example, that restaking doesn't really secure EigenDA. I want to explain the trust model of EigenDA. So how EigenDA, EigenDA works is, you know, it's a service built on EigenLayer. Uh, stakers opt into EigenLayer and then opt in to serve EigenDA. And EigenLayer itself is built on a dual trust model. There are two aspects of trust that one can borrow from EigenLayer. Number one is economic security. Just take a bunch of ETH and then make a claim that uh, you are going to validate these services correctly. And if you don't, your ETH will get slashed. So for objectively attributable faults, ETH staking provides economic security. There's another dimension to, um, there's another dimension to Eigenlayer, which is actually decentralization. You can borrow decentralized node operators who are actually serving Ethereum and they because these are decentralized node operators, you get a certain amount of collusion resistance, which means you know they're not all the same and they're not gonna collude together. So Eigenlayer itself serves both of these trust models. It's economic security for objectively attributable faults and collusion resistance for comes from decentralization. EigenDA is a data availability service, which means it does two fundamental things. It downloads and stores the data, the EigenDA nodes download and store the data, but also they have to serve the data. And the way EigenDA borrows trust is it borrows trust from on the economic security from ETH staking by using a protocol called proof of custody. Proof of custody ensures that, you know, the proof of custody protocol is kind of conceptually simple. If you're claiming to store a bunch of data, you have to compute a function on the data and some private secret, and then you have to uh, raise your hand or like send a message if the hash of this function is zero, for example. So pr what proof of custody does is to ensure that you're actually holding custody of the data. And if you don't hold custody of the data, you will get slashed. So EigenDA borrows economic security from each staking. However, there is another dimension needed for data availability. It's not enough for nodes to store the data. Nodes have to serve the data. What if we all just storing the data and then never serve it to anybody? Then the data is not really available. So how do we get nodes to serve the data? You know, each of the nodes have an incentive to serve the data, you know, especially when each of the node can operate its own fee market for a service. This is because, you know, the data is not held only by a few nodes. The data is dispersed across many nodes and any subset of nodes, you know, if, if you're array ratio coding at, you know, 10x ratio, then any 10% of the nodes are sufficient to serve the data. So there is no monopoly in service. What this does is to create a competitive market to serve. And this requires decentralization. Because, you know, if everybody is the same guy, then they can all collude and then, you know, so refuse to serve data, but because it's a highly decentralized set, you can actually get, uh, you know, the incentive to serve. So EigenDA is actually built on stay on the security that comes from EigenLayer, not only the economic security, but also decentralization. So one of the things you have to do, you know, if you want to borrow decentralization, is to keep the node requirements to be the minimal. Because if, if you say that I need a one GBPS a bandwidth to run a node, very few people will be able to do it. But EigenDA node requirements are kept very low so that you can actually have a highly decentralized operator set. So that's the first myth busted. Okay. What's the second myth? DA on alternative data availability chains increase Ethereum L2 security. Oh, if you have to be an Ethereum L2, 
you have to use data availability sampling, otherwise you're not secure. Okay, so let's see. Data availability sampling helps. What is the use of data availability sampling when a majority of the nodes are malicious? Even if a majority of the validator nodes are malicious, you can check for yourself that the data is available. However, data availability sampling cannot be performed by the Ethereum roll-up contracts. Imagine you want to be an L2, the main thing you're writing is a roll-up contract. Roll-up contracts cannot do data availability sampling. So if a majority of the DA nodes are malicious, the roll-up contracts will be fooled. It doesn't matter that you're sampling and you realize that, yeah, you know, the data is not available. You cannot go do and intervene on the roll-up contracts because they are, you know, static immutable contracts on Ethereum. So data availability sampling does not influence Ethereum roll-up security. Myth busted. Data availability sampling does not increase ETHL2 security. Okay, myth three. Eigen DA is a DAC. Other DAs are not DACs. DAC is a data availability committee. You know, the image that is supposed to conjure, oh, it's just a multi-sig or a small number of nodes that's just saying something. From the Ethereum viewpoint, only thing that the Ethereum roll-up contracts can see, whether you're running, uh, you know, any other DA chain, it doesn't matter. From the Ethereum roll-up viewpoint, it just knows that a majority of the validators have signed off on the data. Any non-native data availability solution appears like a data availability committee to Ethereum. You know, you're just basically getting a signature of a group of nodes. These group of nodes may be staked, they may be rotating, they may have economic consequences for doing this. All that is true, but it's just, there is no way to get any better security than like a, a committee. Different DA systems will have different trust assumptions on these DACs. So from the viewpoint of Ethereum, everything is a data availability committee. Okay. Um, here's another myth. You know, myths may be true or false. So let's examine the myth. Data availability sampling on alternative DA chains helps secure rollups which are built natively on these chains. Okay. So, what data availability sampling does is to help you secure against a malicious majority of nodes, of validators. And if you're building a native rollup on a chain which performs data availability sampling, what happens is light clients which use the data availability sampling will not be fooled. So if you build a native rollup on a data availability chain, you actually absorb the strong security that the data availability sampling gives you. This myth is confirmed. So actually it is true that DAS, data availability sampling on a DA chain, secures native rollups. It doesn't secure Ethereum rollups. So the only way to secure Ethereum rollups is to do data is to use the Ethereum data availability layer. What's the next myth? Data availability sampling is a mechanism for scaling consensus performance. As you, if you do data availability sampling, as you have more nodes sampling the network, the performance increases. This is not true because data availability sampling is fundamentally verifiability scaling. What it means is, you know, a network is running, uh, uh, a network is actually maintaining the data. From the outside, you want to know whether the network is actually storing the data or not. One way you get to know is by asking questions. Hey, give me this data, give me that data, and you're able to get it. That means you can be sure that the data is available. And instead of downloading the entire data, you're only downloading a few chunks. So data availability sampling is a scaling of verifiability. Nodes outside the system actually don't need to download the data. But inside the system, the consensus nodes, which are actually holding the data, depending on the design, may need to actually download all the data and propagate it through a peer-to-peer -peer network and so on. And so data availability sampling by itself does not scale network performance because consensus nodes are still downloading all the data. Okay, 
Eigen DA cannot have data availability sampling, MIT-6. Data availability sampling is actually a relatively simple primitive to build if there are erasure coded commitments. If the block header contains the, uh, the commitment to an erasure code, you can actually build sampling. Um, data availability sampling does not help Ethereum L2s, which is what we saw. And Eigen DA is purely uh, a data availability system which is adjacent or adjunct to the Ethereum roll-up ecosystem. It's not a chain on its own. It doesn't do anything else. It doesn't do consensus. There's no blockchain. Eigen DA is purely an Ethereum adjacent, uh, Ethereum centric data availability system. And so we, we didn't build data availability sampling. However, data availability sampling can be built out of protocol permissionlessly. What does it mean? You know, in, in, for example, let's say you're building a blockchain like Ethereum. It's very important to get, let's say, the block size right, the consensus protocol right, and so on, because anybody else cannot change it. But anybody can build a wallet to Ethereum. Data availability sampling is something similar. Anybody can build a light client once you have erasure coded commitments in the network. Busted. EigenDA can have data availability sampling. It'll be, to the extent that it's useful, people can build it. MIT-7, EigenDA scales with the number of nodes. So I mentioned earlier that data availability sampling itself doesn't actually help scale. What helps scale the network performance is making sure that each node's footprint, each consensus node's footprint is very low. And that's exactly what happens in EigenDA. Every node only downloads a little bit of the data. So the total DA bandwidth of the system scales linearly in the number of nodes. And EigenDA keeps node bandwidth low. Remember earlier, I was saying that we need more decentralization in our trust model. And so you can actually get it with uh, EigenDA. OK. Mithe, data availability challenges rock. So what's a data availability challenge? It's basically an optimistic data proof. What is an optimistic data proof? Somebody claims, it's kind of like an optimistic roll-up, you know, in an optimistic roll-up, somebody claims that if I execute this, this is what happens. Anybody can challenge it and, um, you know, whoever wins, whoever is correct, they keep the money and the other guy loses the money. It's exactly the same idea for doing data availability challenges. However, there are two major problems with data availability challenges. Um, the first thing is data availability is not attributable on chain. Unlike execution, if I run something and put it on Ethereum, then Ethereum can check later whether that is correct or not. Whereas if I claim that the data is available and somebody challenges, Ethereum does not know whether I am correct or the challenger is correct. So this leads to a complex incentive problem. The second problem is the throughput problem. Imagine I run a data availability layer with 10,000 times Ethereum's throughput. And the challenge window is one day. Now, if somebody challenges and you ask me to post all the data on Ethereum, and you know if you, are, if you post the challenge after the one day period, I may have to post 10,000 days worth of data onto Ethereum. You know, it's gonna take me 10,000 days to post all the data. What are we talking about here? Simply doesn't make any sense. Busted, data availability challenges don't work. In the last one minute, I'll just explain what we're actually doing. I just mentioned a bunch of myths here. EigenDA is a hyperscale Ethereum-centric data availability system. It's built purely as an adjacent, adjunct data availability layer to Ethereum. What do I mean by this? Ethereum has its own consensus protocol which orders all these roll-up commitments. And so we don't need to actually go and reinvent the wheel and build exactly the same thing by building a new uh, com consensus protocol. So we can completely ride on top of the consensus in Ethereum and only do data availability attestations. So it allows us to make trade-offs. Simply a separate chain cannot do because you know it couples consensus and data availability. And we've optimized the system for high scale, low cost, reserved bandwidth. You know, in EigenDA you can reserve how much bandwidth you want for the, you know, for a whole year. 
You can pay in multiple tokens with fixed rates negotiated a priori. You can have multi-quorum staking. You, you're building your own roll-up. You want your own roll-up token to have utility. You can use it in EigenDA as a part of dual staking. Um, OK. Last slide. Uh, you know, we've been working closely with Altlayer, and one of the things that we're envisioning to do is everybody can build an L2 on top of Ethereum using EigenDA. Thank you. <laughs>